Okay, let's calculate our thermal efficiency. So, what is the thermal efficiency of a gas power cycle? Okay, gas power cycle using thermal energy reservoirs at 627 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Celsius. As a note, like this idea of a thermal energy reservoir, it sounds really exoteric and kind of crazy. It's not, okay? And all, you know, we're pretending like there's magical heat things that send heat in and we send heat out, but we don't. Like this is exhaust, okay, when we're sending our energy out at 70 degrees Celsius, but that's simply the exhaust temperature. And the other one right there, that's the combustion temperature. So just know that when you're going into your heat engine, okay, this is my heat in HE, and the heat in the T high and the T low, that's typically your exhaust gas and your um, combustion gas. That's where the energy is going. That's where the energy is coming in as. So don't worry if you see these weird words like what in the world is that? How is that real life? We're just simplifying things somewhat because eventually we will get into talking about combustion. We're just not there yet. Okay, so we've got T high 627 degrees Celsius, T low is 70 degrees Celsius. These are relative people. We're going to have to convert to Kelvin. Good thing they gave us this. It makes it a little bit easier when we're converting. So I know my thermal efficiency for the Carnot cycle is just 1 minus T low over T high. I plug that in there. You're like, what? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really this simple. And I have my answer. So the Carnot efficiency is 62% which is saying the absolute best system in the world could only be 62% efficient. So if somebody tells you, oh yeah, it's 65% efficient for these settings, they're lying. It, it can't happen. It's impossible. Or they've broken the laws of physics and you need to befriend that person because that's amazing. Like, Break the laws of physics if you can, people. That'd be incredible. Me personally, I've never done that. But you know, if you can, tell me about it. Okay, but either way, we always know that we're going to be something less than this. So in real life, my efficiency is always, always going to be less than that, okay? And so that's what I need to be planning for. Planning for my system being less than 62% efficient. Because if I need exactly this efficiency to survive, to work, it's not going to happen. I've got to be able to plan for being lower in the real realm of things. This is just an upper limit. Okay, but that's it. Pretty simple problem. Don't worry, they're going to get more complex as we go. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.